Greetings and salutations everyone, it's Michael and Peter here with GoodyWeeder.com and today we're looking at the new Samsung Galaxy Tab for Nook and we're comparing that against the Nook HD. Uh, purpose of today's video is just to give you an indication on if you do have an older model, is it worth it upgrading to the new one? We're going to look at most of the common things that you're going to be doing day to day and uh, you know, kind of give you the skinny on the subtle differences. So. Of course, with the Nook HD, it's a heavily skinned version of Android. It has parental profiles that you can establish. It has a lot of parental controls, um, but you can't change the background. No. You can't change widgets and live wallpapers. It doesn't have front or rear facing cameras. Uh, this has it all. This has front facing, rear facing. You can establish backgrounds and live wallpapers. You can put in uh, your own keyboards. You can mm -hmm. do a lot of heavy customization because in essence this is running a fairly modern version of Android that's not heavily skinned at all. You can see why Barnes & Noble took Samsung to do the hardware because they were kind of trapped with this and proprietary plugs and you know OS's that you really didn't know how to use. I mean, it is a good move that they went with something a little more familiar. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that the Samsung uh, tab actually charges via USB mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in just plugging into your computer and that's not the case with this you right. actually need to oh you need a wall charger with a 20 pin yeah. almost like the iPhone 4 <laughs> So aside from everything that I just Perhaps. mentioned, let's look at the things that really make this uh, different. So um, Nook apps is, this is where your apps are located. So we'll go to the shop here and we'll look at apps. So uh, you'll see that immediately the layout is very similar, but the color scheme is a little bit different. So they went with the maroons and purples and uh, a lot of the top um, headliners there are a little bit different at But time. all the same navigation yeah. is the same. Now, here's the important note with the Nook App mm -hmm. Store. We live in Canada and we're unable to download and install even free apps on the Nook HD. Yes. But with the Samsung version, accessing the same Nook Store, we can actually download and install Very as strange. well as pay for apps as well. So suddenly the Nook ecosystem itself is tremendously viable outside the US and UK for anybody now because you can anything that you see here you can buy and download exactly no problems really opened it up internationally next let's look at the library because this is where you're gonna spend the majority of your time so we have uh, just a listing of things here we have to expand them in order to see anything on here whereas this is pretty much streamlined and it's all laid out for you you can see that the icons for everything are a bit larger as well right if you look at say your, your book purchases I like this one because it's almost double the size yeah so you can actually see There's not really read. any reason for it to be this small yeah <laughs> so th the one cool thing about this Samsung Galaxy Tab for Nook is that it comes with about two hundred dollars worth of free content. It comes with a number of free ebooks, uh, free economics, I'm number four, as well as the following, um, you know, things: Breaking Bad, Natural Selection, Veep, uh, and uh, some kids' books that kind of introduces you to all aspects of the Nook ecosystem with giving you enough free content that you know, if you like reading magazines, then hey, right. you could actually buy more of them. There you go. So I do like the library interface a lot more on, yeah. on this one <laughs> Looks way than better. the older version. So speaking of eBooks, let's load one up and see what the differences are. So this opened up way <laughs> quick. <laughs> this is taking forever. All right, so we'll just get to a page here. You can already tell the screens are different. This has a lot more, uh, this is a lot lower quality screen than this one. This has a lot more light blues in the background. This is more of a white. Yeah. So we'll just tap the center here to open up some text changes. And we have pretty much the same options with just different design features. So you see there's a little double A, whereas this is just the color. But we have all the same things, all the fonts. You can load in different fonts on this under different reading apps because you're not locked into using Barnes & Noble, whereas this, you're pretty much locked to using Barnes & Noble. Yeah, with this, you can't even sideload in your own apps. No, that's another it. thing. You can't sideload onto this uh, device. So even it has no APK installer built in for sideloaded content. 
So we'll just do some long presses. You have different ways to highlight. Only the one color on the Nook here. Whereas the Samsung Nook, you have several different colors. Let's look at a uh, keyboard comparison. So once again, this is running open Android. You can put whatever keyboard you want on there. This one, you're locked into this Nook-esque version. Yeah, so if you want Swift Key or anything like that, no problem. Right. So the reading experience is pretty much the same. They're both tablets, so they're going to turn pages very quickly. But I just think the overall screen technology and responsiveness is a lot better on the Samsung than their own creation. And it was funny because a lot of people, when they heard about this, were saying, the resolution on the Nook HD is so much better. Right. Why would I go for a downgrade? Well, you could... I, I, Hopefully you could see for yourself, but from real world conditions, I was say that, this yeah. is a whiter background. The text is darker. This is more muted. So now we're going to look at a magazine because this is something that the Barnes and Noble devices really shine at because it is running color. They do have a lot of magazines in their bookstore. Uh, this is what they're both looking like. So you see, they both have page turn animations. They're actually both kind of laggy when it comes to that. So you have page turn animations, same with the Nook HD. The It's up to you guys to decide which one you like the most in terms of the resolution. Remember the resolution is a little bit better on this, but you can compare numbers all day. But when it comes down to the real world test, that's a different story because just like with cars and and clothes and just everything. I mean, it, you can compare specs and numbers and, and all that stuff, but when it comes down to you actually using it, it can kind of surprise you. So we're gonna do some pinching and zooming, see if we can on both of these. Looks like you can, very limited functionality. You have article view as well. This changes the whole magazine experience into just an article. Wow, the, the uh, Contrast is much better on the Samsung Galaxy 4 Nook than it is on the Nook HD. The Nook HD is also using a very weird screen, so you see a lot of lines on it, at least on camera, because it's a lower quality screen than the Samsung. So this is the magazine experience. We're going to go back home. All in all, this is the comparison between these two devices. The Nook HD is very skinned. Uh, the Nook HD Plus as well. The, this was their last generation, if you want to call it a generation, because technically they didn't make the Samsung Galaxy 4 Nook, they just skinned it with a bunch of Nook stuff. So this is about $200 for the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4, but if you get the version that is the Barnes & Noble version, you actually save $20 on it. It's about only $179 instead of $199. And that is because you're running Nook apps, but if you don't want the apps, you can always just not use them. The only thing that really gets in the way of this device not being a full Samsung device is this little logo down here. This one you can't actually remove. It just opens up the Nook reading app wherever the wherever you are on the home screen. You see you can't really get rid of it and you can't change it to something else. But other than that, this is the comparison between these two. If you think you like the last generation one, pick up a Nook tablet, uh, sorry, a Nook HD or Nook HD Plus. If you like the new stuff from Barnes & Noble or Samsung, I suppose you could say, grab the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 Nook. It offers a lot more international friendly content, whereas this is pretty restrictive because it is a US, UK only device. When you start it up, it actually says, are you in the UK or the US? Those are your only options. And with a lot of the stuff, like with um, uh, the magazines and books and just a lot of stuff on this device, apps, TV, you try to download or you try to even pay for it and they won't even let you take your money. They won't, even, they won't even let themselves take your money because it says this is not available in your country due to geographical restrictions. So this is the comparison between the Nook HD and the Nook, uh, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 Nook version. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, if we flew over anything, if you want us to look at anything else on these devices, let us know. Uh, YouTube.com slash goodreader is our YouTube channel. We have over 1,100 videos on that channel. More to come every day. We do requests as well. So if you guys have anything you want us to do, let us know. We'll try to accommodate. What is in there? We have a SD card micro up to 32 gigabytes. We have status indicator light. This extra hole is for the latch like so, and we have the micro USB port which is utilized for charging the device and transferring data to and from the device to your computer.
So we tap the power button to wake it up. And this is the home screen, Mike. Tell us what we're looking at. Okay, the resolution is 1440 by 1080. So you're getting tremendous screen clarity and resolution. It also has a front lit display and you can get this 